Colin Bouquet is the president of Archer Petroleum, a Canadian listed company focused on becoming a leading US oil sand producer. Colin has joined us from Vancouver today and he's here in our studio in Geneva. Colin, good morning. Good morning. Colin, can you explain us what is the difference between bitumen mining and traditional oil and gas mining? And furthermore, what is the difference between mining in, the, in Canada and mining in the U.S.? Of course, I'd be happy to. I think one of the key considerations that you have with any traditional oil and gas play is what is essentially a parabolic decline curve. You're drilling into a high pressure reservoir that contains hydrocarbons in the form of oil or gas. And once you release those hydrocarbons, the pressures in the reservoir decline. And that leads to what we have behind us, which is essentially a, a very steep decline curve where your production will drop over time. Now, the net effect of this on a company is that they have to continually reinvest capital to maintain production levels. And if they actually intend on increasing production levels over the long term, it's an order of magnitude additional capex to actually achieve that. With bitumen mining, what you're essentially doing is strip mining a, re a resource that sits very close to the surface. And because you're mining what is essentially a very consistent long-term resource, you're going to have a flat production level. You're going to be literally mining rock at surface and processing that rock to extract the oil. So what that actually ends up uh, creating is a situation where you have a very stable production outcome, very stable production outlook, and uh, a significantly lower capex associated with that over the long term. And a consideration when you're looking at the differences between Canadian and U.S. oil sands. I mean, the Canadian oil sands is a very well-known operation. It's a huge, huge infrastructure and capex uh, operation that exists in Canada. Um, one of the primary differences is that in the United States, you're dealing with what is essentially a consolidated sandstone. It's considered oil wet, whereas in Canada, you have a water wet oil sands, which means that there's actually a water particle that binds the a uh, sand particle and the hydrocarbon particle together. And that means that heat extraction is a very, very common method that works very well in Canada, but it doesn't work in the United States. You have to use a different extraction methodology, which is why we've come along with our new uh, initiative to, to develop those oil sands using this proprietary extraction technology. Colin, where are the rich, the tar rich sands in the US and where are your projects? Well, depending on what uh, resource estimate you actually refer to, there's estimates of anywhere between 50 to 80 billion barrels of heavy oil that exist in the United States. And most of it exists within this, as we mentioned, consolidated sandstone that sits very, very close to the surface. There are a number of states that are very, very rich in resource, um, ranging from Utah, which is the largest, California, Texas as well. The states that we're focusing on primarily at this stage is Kentucky, Utah, and Alabama. Our initial projects are in Kentucky, and the primary reason we're focusing on that is because the permitting process is very clean. Uh, permitting a new site in Kentucky will take approximately six months. And another very important consideration is that we're very close to the U.S. Gulf refineries, which is a key difference between an oil sand operation that exists in an area like Kentucky, for instance, versus something that exists in Canada, where you have this enormous infrastructure challenge of actually moving your product to market. We're nine miles from railhead at our initial project, and then straight shot to the U.S. Gulf, which allows us very easy access to transportation and refinery access. What are your uh, production targets? Our year one production target is to have a 2,000 barrel a day facility up and running in Kentucky, uh, with an additional facility being added at least once a year for the next three years thereafter. So a uh, very conservative number, 2,000 year one, three to 5,000 barrels in year two, and targeting 5,000 barrels and up in year three. Okay, and I understand that your technology is very, very different from anything else that's been used elsewhere. Can you explain that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the, the key difference between our process and a variety of other processes that exist out there right now is that we are using what is essentially a non-thermal, mechanical and chemical process to separate the hydrocarbon from the sand. And uh, something that's incredibly important here is that we use a chemical called SandClean 950, which is a patented, proprietary, EPA, which is Environmental Protection Agency, approved chemical, which is biodegradable, it's non-toxic, it's non-hazardous, and it doesn't require heat to operate. A key difference is that it has a much lower environmental impact than any other heat process that exists out there today. Uh, there's no tailings ponds. 
Uh, there's very little emissions, and the overall envir environmental footprint is very much lower. Uh, another very important consideration is when you're not having to heat your product up to an enormous temperature to be able to actually uh, cause the extraction process to happen, the capex associated with the project is much lower than what exists in traditional methods. Uh, and I can actually give you an example. The Canadian Research Institute estimates that to create a single barrel of production capacity in the Canadian oil sands, the various methods ranging from oil sands mining up to um, SAG-D ranges from anywhere from $30,000 per barrel of, of capacity up to around $130,000 per barrel of capacity. Uh, our technology, because it doesn't utilize heat, costs approximately $3,000 per barrel of capacity, so it's an order of magnitude cheaper. That's wonderful. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you.